Hello everyone, Fox here, and today is March 26th, 2019, and that means it's time for the new update for State of K2, Choose Your Own Apocalypse, and that means homework. Yes, I have to do my homework before I can even play the game. Let's get started. It's time to Choose Your Own Apocalypse. The Choose Your Own Apocalypse update is a free upgrade launching March 26th at 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Pacific Daylight Time for all Stave Decay 2 players, including those with access via Xbox Game Pass and owners of the Standard and Ultimate Editions. The update includes two additional difficulty options, Dread Zones and Nightmare Zones. Dread Zones are designed to offer exciting new challenges to experienced Stave Decay 2 players, so it's kind of a medium increase in difficulty. Nightmare Zones are grueling endurance tests for truly hardcore players, and it is supposed to be the super hard difficulty. We'll be the judge of that. You can bring an existing community to one of these zones via the new difficulty screen to the right of the base screen, or start a brand new community within this one. Beware! Permadeath is still a thing. Well, it wouldn't be State of Decay if it didn't have that. And these new zones are much more unforgiving than standard zones. Time to scroll down. Talking about Dread Zones. Here are the additional challenges you will face when you play within a Dread Zone. Bold items were specifically requested by the community. Legacy Boons. A Legacy Boon must be earned in either a Dread Zone or a Nightmare Zone before you can use it in a Dread Zone. What this means is that your Boons are gone. They're still available to your standard communities, but they're not available yet in Dread or Nightmare Zone. It also means that it unlocks retroactively. So if you unlock a Boon in Nightmare, which is the harder of the two difficulties, you will also unlock it in the Dread Zone. A legacy boon that has only been earned in the standard zone will be disabled upon entering a dread zone. On the community section, morale is lower by default, though you can earn some new temporary morale bonuses. Threat level is elevated, making sieges at your base more frequent and more dangerous. Some facilities cost more to build and to use. Some radio commands cost more influence and have many and many have longer cooldowns between uses. Zombies. Zombies and freaks are more numerous, hordes are larger and more frequent, and some of them wear armor. Interesting. Zombie attacks do more damage and cause more injuries. Zombies are no longer visible on the minimap unless your active character has the scouting skill. Zombies can hear your gunshots farther away. Zombies will spend longer chasing a noise before losing interest. And zombies no longer have their attention drawn to noisemakers if they have already spotted a human. This means that the distractions like the firecrackers are not effective if they are already after a human target. Blood Plague. Blood Plague is more infectious and kills you faster. Plague Arts are harder to kill and drop more rewards. Plague Hordes are much larger and Plague Juggernauts are on the loose. The fumes from damaged Plague Hearts cause Blood Plague. Hostile Humans. Hostile NPCs are more alert and more aggressive. They do more damage with their attacks. Hostile NPCs can survive a headshot or two before dying. Oh my, they didn't tell me about that one. Scavenging. There are fewer resources and items to be found in the world. Some of the sites in each map have been completely looted even before you get there. There are fewer vehicles on the map, and the vehicles you do find are more likely to be damaged or low on fuel. Collision and zombie attacks do more damage to vehicles. That's probably a good idea, as vehicles were extremely powerful. And now on to the Nightmare Zones. This is the highest difficulty of the ones added. Nightmare Zones have all the same challenges as the Dread Zones, plus Legacy Boons, they have to be unlocked specifically on the Nightmare Zone before you can use it there. A Legacy Boon that has only been earned in the standard... Yeah, we already know that. You can't use that. You have to unlock it specifically in the Nightmare Zone. Communities. Community members consume more food daily. That's actually 1.5 per community they talked about in one of the streams. Standing and experience gains are reduced. 
Facilities cost much more to build and use. You know, even if standing and EXP is reduced, there'll be so many more enemies that you're probably still going to go through it pretty quickly. Zombies. Zombies are even more likely to inflict injuries. We've seen that a normal everyday zombie bit a developer and he suffered an injury from a normal everyday zombie. There are significantly more freaks and hordes in the world. Zombies have an extremely long memory for where noises came from. Zombies that can't reach you draw more zombies to investigate. Oh, that's interesting. So I assume that means if you get on a vehicle or you get onto a structure, they bring more zombies. I don't know how they would do that. Maybe they make more noise. Screamers draw more zombies when they scream, so shoot them fast. Bloaters, screamers, and ferals can travel in packs. So that means no juggernaut groups, but it seems like the juggernauts can still spawn close enough to each other to effectively form a group. Blood Plague. Blood Plague is even more virulent, which probably means that you suffer a greater amount of infection per attack. Plague Hearts are more abundant, so that means that there will be more than nine. Hostile Humans. Hostile NPCs do even more damage with their attacks. Hostile NPCs can take even more headshots before dying. Hostile NPCs have a chance to headshot the player, bringing them near death. That actually makes them sound pretty scary. I wonder how frequently they can score a headshot. Scavenging. There are even fewer resources and items to be found in the world. Many of the sites in each map have been completely looted before you can even get there. Vehicles are even rarer and tend to show up broken down and out of gas. Guns are more likely to break or jam. Achievements. They've added 16 new achievements in the Dread Zones and the Nightmare Zones, so collectively worth 275 gamer score. A couple of them may be dubious distinctions triggered by character deaths. Hmm. General updates. We've also continued to make improvements to the core game based in large part on feedback from our community. The big ticket items include a new interface for managing your legacy survivors. When you add new legacy characters to the pool, you get to decide who stays and who goes. A new menu that lets you choose your map when establishing a new community. A fix to play guards that makes them less vulnerable to explosions. Hmm. A fix to the stealth skill that keeps your character from creeping around by themselves without your permission. Yeah, that was the kind of auto walk that was going on. A change that allows your inactive character to heal when you are a client in multiplayer. Check out the full detailed list below. Eh, whoops, got to go down, not up. Alrighty, and these are the nitty-gritty features. User experience, community requests. We've added a new character manager that allows you to view and edit your collection of legacy survivors each time you've completed a legacy. Now your characters are not deleted behind the scenes when you complete a legacy and exceed the 50 character cap. That's a lot of times you beat the game, that's for sure. Instead, each time you add new characters to the pool, you have a chance to manually select uh, select which to keep and which to dismiss. Community request. You can now select which map you wish to play on when creating a new community, entering a new zone, or switching to a new map. So it's no longer random. Very nice. Community request. We fixed a player-reported bug that caused... Elements of the leader selection interface to persist after the interface was closed. When you complete a legacy, you are now returned to the main menu rather than being prompted to immediately start a new game. When you are low on particular resource, rucksacks containing that resource will pulse to draw attention to themselves. Notifications for positive events like influence re rewards are now flashier and easier to notice. Now to the Community Management tab. Community Request. New Red Talent recruits can no longer receive the backup good example hero bonus because it's kind of pathetic compared to the unique Red Talon ones. Another Community Request. Your follower is now treated as a high-priority character by population management system and no longer wink out of existence when you approach a base full of people. We improved the camera behavior when switching to a character within the base to prevent it from getting stuck in a broken state. Characters now leave stealth when being cured of blood plague to avoid rare disasters. Interesting, never heard of that one. 
Stacking experience penalties can no longer reduce a character's experience rate below 25%. The infirmary now displays the correct rate of meds usage when treating blood plague. And to the gameplay group, community re these are all community requests. Sneaking with the stealth skill no longer causes involuntary movement. They mentioned that. We improved how our characters held some firearms to make sure their hands lined up with the guns properly. Cleo weapons now award the correct experience types for improving fighting specializations like striking swordplay. Your character now remembers the state of their flashlight as they get in or out of vehicles, and if you get in with your vehicle on with the light on, you get out with your light on. Okay, so that means you don't have to click it on and off as much. You can now break the open rucksack on your back while searching a container. That's convenient. Nice quality of life improvement. Now for changes with zombies. Community request. Ambient zombies are now actively avoid entering the safe zone around the player base. Enclaves, bases now post in other secured sites. That's annoying when they do that. I really hate when they do that. They will still chase you inside if you get their attention, but they won't just wander in for no reason. That means that the safe zones actually are safe zones. Plague Arts now drop more loot in addition to the us usual Plague Sample. Let's not think too hard how those items got there. Well, they're obviously an amalgamation of body parts, so that's how they got there. The loot gets better in Dread Zones and reaches its apex in Nightmare Zones, so killing the Play Guards in a Nightmare Zone should get you pretty good stuff. We fixed a rare case where you could hit a zombie with an unexploded grenade and knock off all their limbs. Never seen that. We fixed a bug that was making Play Guards too sensitive to explosions. You can now expect killing a Play Guard in the Standard Zone to take approximately... Seven soda can bombs, or four pipe bombs, or three frag grenades, or two C4 charges. That's really not that big of a deal. That's one more pipe bomb than I use. Normally it would take three pipe bombs to kill a plague art. What's one more? Radio commands. The item that triggers the sniper support radio command can now be used from within a vehicle. The Blood Plague Assistance Supply Drop now contains the intended two rucksacks instead of one. The Roadside Assistance Supply Drop can now contain multiple toolkits and gas cans instead of only one of each. Now to the multiplayer updates. Another community request. Inactive characters in a client community now heal at the same rate as the host's inactive character. This should help keep you going during long co-op games. Depending on the host's facility, this healing can affect health loss, trauma, and injuries. We reduced instances where a client driving a car could be tethered to the host, then arrive in the middle of an obstacle and immediately explode. I've never seen that happen either. Missions. Community request fixed a player reported bug where a sniper rifle in one of the Eagle Eye missions was arriving with way more rounds in it than its magazine could hold. So I guess that's technically a nerf to it. We fixed a bug that was causing bloater deaths not to be counted properly for doing some missions. And lastly, finally, the other stuff tab. Community requests. We fixed terrain and geometry in various places, including some called out by players to prevent folks from unexpectedly crashing vehicles or getting stuck. We fixed a number of instances where characters could fall through the world. We made some improvements to hostile human AI, particularly around their base. That doesn't sound very good for the higher difficulties. We made further improvements to multiplayer stability. And there you have it, all of the updates. I actually did this live instead of not doing it live. So that means you get to hear me breathing and I can't speak as quickly when I just cut everything in the editing of the sound. But anyways, that is that. The Choose Your Own Apocalypse update for State of Decay 2. Like this video if it was helpful getting you in touch with the patch notes and subscribe to my channel for future State of Decay 2 updates. And of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.